July 20th, 1969. Astronauts Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin became the first men to land on the moon. Houston, you're a go for landing, over. Roger, understand, go for landing, 3,000 feet. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. In 2002, the Mars Odyssey spacecraft detected enormous reservoirs of ice beneath the Martian surface. The presence of ice and the possibility of water suggested that life could be sustained or even generated on another planet. After decades of orbiting space shuttles and robotic rovers, the idea of sending man back into space to Mars and beyond ignited the imagination. You look at organisms and cells as if they are computers or computer programs. You're essentially trying to figure out how you program that cell to go and do something. So you're using DNA and molecules and organisms, the stuff of life, mm -hmm. to program it to fuels and fuels like that. You can make food, you can make fuel for us. Absolutely. We could easily live healthier for a lot longer. As we unlock the secrets held in our genes, we'll swim up a new river towards what some call the post-human era. Cloning will be a completely new way of making a human being. Instead of the combination of father's sperm and mother's egg that makes each of us unique, cloning will create a baby from a single cell, from a single person. The clone will be an identical genetic copy. Today we are fast approaching the day when the body can no longer be regarded as fixed. Man will be able, within a reasonably short period, to redesign not merely individual bodies, but the entire human race. Einstein's big idea was that the amazing speed of light holds the key to everything, from the untold power of the atom to the possibility of time travel. Welcome to the realm of time travel. It turns out that if an object is moving fast enough through space, 
it can alter its passage through time. This is where physics and science fiction collide. Time for the moving clock runs slow, although if you travel with it, like Bertrand, you're not aware of the change. That's because everything happening on board, including your heartbeat and your brain waves, would slow down by the same amount. The faster Bertrand travels, the further the photon has to go between ticks, and the slower time passes for him. So what might be an hour for Bertrand could be a hundred years for the rest of us. In effect, he would be traveling a hundred years into the future. is like a river. River of time may have whirlpools, and the river oh. of time may fork into two separate rivers. Okay. And this explains the paradoxes of time travel. When you go backwards in time to meet somebody else's timeline, <laughs> the catch is you have to be what we call a type 3 civilization, capable of manipulating the power of a black hole, the power of a star. Mm -hmm. Space and time is a fabric. We can bend the fabric of space-time. We measured this in the laboratory. When we physicists look in outer space for alien life, we don't look for little green men. We look for type 1, type 2, and type 3 civilizations. A type 1 civilization has harnessed planetary power. They control earthquakes, the weather, volcanoes, they have cities on the ocean, anything planetary they control. That's type one. A type two civilization is stellar. They've exhausted the power of a planet and they get their energy directly from their mother star. They just don't get a suntan on a weekend, they use solar flares. They use the power of the sun itself to energize their huge machines. Eventually they exhaust the power of a star and they go galactic. They harness the power of billions of stars within a galaxy. Now, for example, Buck Rogers would correspond to a type one civilization, a planetary civilization. Star Trek and the Federation of Planets, who have colonized a few star systems, would correspond to a type two system. And the empire of Star Wars would correspond to a type three civilization. Now, what are we on this scale? We are type zero. We don't even rate on this scale. We get our energy from, not from stars or galaxies, we get our energy from dead plants, oil and coal. But we can calculate when we will attain type one status in about a hundred years. than half a million years and yet we know that the average shelf life of a species is maybe one to ten million years so maybe we have a rosy future ahead of us the future of our species is uncertain but our skills are unparalleled we know how to survive 
Now, we must add wisdom to that knowledge.